Turkey's longest serving leader, the founder and face of the AKP party that he started 21 years ago. Recep Tayyip Erdogan has outlasted even the founder of the Turkish Republic, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Indeed, Erdogan has strived to supplant Atatürk to become the heart of modern Turkey with his numerous mega projects and policies. The self-described Black Turk won votes partly thanks to his identity as a man of religion from a poor background with a bone to pick with the West. It has helped him shape Turkey in his image. About 15,000 mosques have been built since 2002, but also countless roads, dams, hospitals and schools. His supporters say Turkey has been transformed. Despite the current economic troubles, life for the Turkish middle class especially has vastly improved. Let's hear from Erdogan after his presidential win of 2018. The big winner in this election is democracy. Now we'll put the new presidential system I promised in place. Edwin's detractors, though, accuse him of stifling public opinion, of weakening the judiciary and the democratic process, as well as favouring religion over secular ideals. Those decisions inevitably directly affecting people in very different ways. Well, France 24 has been speaking with two men roughly the same age, living and working in the same area, surround Istanbul. One has opened a business which is flourishing. Another has been hounded by the courts, spent time in jail and lost his job. Shona Bhattacharya and Ludovic de Foucault revisit Erdogan's AKP party for France 24. A few kilometers off the shores of Istanbul, in the Marmara Sea, lies an archipelago of nine islands. The Prince's Islands, where Byzantine emperors were sent into exile when they had fallen out of grace. Today, the islands are home mostly to holiday houses, a welcome getaway for Istanbul residents, just an hour's boat ride from the center of the city. As soon as they disembark at Bukada, the main island, visitors come across the only offices of the presidential party of the archipelago. Though the islands are part of the jurisdiction of the city of Istanbul, the ruling AK party has never won an election here, even when Recep Tayyip Erdogan was mayor in the 1990s. Oh, hello. My mayor, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Erdem was elected mayor four years ago with an opposition party. When the AKP came to power, their slogan was, we will fight corruption, poverty and restrictions. That was their red line. At the time, Turkey needed it. But that was 20 years ago. Today, Turkey is faced with more corruption, poverty and restrictions than ever before, especially compared to the last 40, 50 years. They're everywhere. This 55-year-old former journalist was personally impacted by the ruling party's restrictions. In a May 29, 2015 article published in the famous Cumhuriyet newspaper, the former Ankara bureau chief detailed the types of ammunition included in secret Turkish weapons convoys headed for the Syrian front. Soon after, Erdem was accused of publishing secret documents and making propaganda for a terrorist organization, among other things. Like dozens of other Turkish journalists, Erdem was sent to jail. Everyone pays the price in Turkey. Personally, I spent 92 days in Silvery Prison. I wouldn't say it's anything special. It's just the price we pay for fighting for democracy in Turkey. It always happened in the past. Today, it happens more often. Mehmet, too, saw his life change because of the AKP, but in the other direction. This cook and owner of a kebab eatery on a neighboring island, Burgazada, has become a strong supporter of his president. Believe me, in the morning, I pray for Erdogan during the morning prayer. I say, take my life and give it to him. I promise it's true. When I go to bed at night, I pray for him again. Since he opened his restaurant, 
Cardislair Café or Brothers Café 15 years ago, Mehmet worked hard and has been able to harvest the fruit of his labor, a better standard of living. And he's not alone. All entrepreneurs benefited from this stability, including me. Every business owner bought a car or an apartment. No one can say they weren't able to buy a house or a car these last 20 years. At the end of the 90s, we all had old cars. Now everyone has a new car. I bought one too, by working. I also bought an apartment. Yet the current economic crisis is slowing development. Turkey has the highest inflation rate among G20 countries, officially at 85 percent. Conditions are similar to those of the late 1990s that had helped the AKP come to power. Mehmet believes that if Erdogan turned the situation around 20 years ago, he can do it again. Why don't we complain about inflation? Because in the past, we had a few glorious years. So today, we have to bear it. We are happy to carry part of our president's burden. A burden that's becoming heavier by the day. Out and about in his jurisdiction, Erdem hears the same complaint over and over. Prices are rising at an alarming rate. Prices jumped 35 percent. In a month? Yes, in a month. Oh boy. The opposition mayor refuses to openly accuse the ruling party on camera. I must admit that recently the government claimed that inflation will fall starting in January. But according to this business owner, do you expect it to fall? No, there's no reason it would. No reason to expect it fall. If the AKP lowered poverty rates by 30 percent in its first 15 years in power, they have been on the rise since 2018. Dairy product prices are breaking records. He can tell you better than me. These are breakfast foods. In Turkey, now there are families that can no longer eat breakfast. Students who go to school on an empty stomach. Meanwhile, Mehmet's day is already over. In winter, tourists are few and far between. He can be back home in time for dinner. The crossing to reach the Asian side of Istanbul takes 40 minutes. Once he reaches his car, he still has a half-hour drive. Erdogan has left his mark on every step along the way. Everything you see is an AKP initiative. All these flowers. Look at these gardens on the side of the road. They made them. They didn't just sit there and say empty words. The road is large. There are flowers everywhere. It's clean. The opposition won the Greater Istanbul Municipality in 2019, but here the neighborhood is still in the hands of the presidential party. High rises, mosques and shopping malls, a typical neighborhood developed under the AKP. Peace be upon you. Welcome. Mehmet may be a cook by day, but at home it's his wife Jevrier who prepares the meals. On the menu, traditional dishes from the Black Sea region. Like Erdogan, the family is originally from the small city of Rize. We are always proud of our president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, even more so because we come from the same place. 
The entire family is coming over for dinner tonight. Zainab and Esra have come with their sons. The two young women are married and do not work outside the home. As is often the case, the discussion turns to politics. Of course we don't always agree. We talk about the party. Sometimes we fight with my father and he kicks me out of the house. <laughs> Among the more contentious subjects of debate is the number of foreigners fleeing war or poverty. Since the start of the war in Syria in 2011, more than three and a half million refugees have arrived in the country. Of Istanbul's 16 million residents, close to two million are foreigners. I have a son. One day he'll be an adult. I would like his classmates to be Turkish. But when we go to school, there are Afghans, Arabs, people from everywhere, Syrians. It's perfectly normal. Yeah, but there are too many now. They're everywhere. Don't be racist. It's true that there are a lot. I think they should be sent back once their country is back in order. As head of the household, Mehmet believes it's his role to educate his daughters on the AKP's refugee policy, in particular regarding Syrians. Syrians are our brothers and sisters. My daughters would understand better if they knew their history. They would see them like our brothers and sisters. If we don't open our doors to them, what will happen to them? Our next door neighbor has a problem. Should we intervene? Should we open our door? Of course we should. Of course, because I'm young, my dad and I fight about this. Because in the past he saw certain things that I just can't compare with. I see things as they are. Yeah. That's why there's a conflict with the older generation, because when I walk down the street, I look left and right, I'm afraid. Another subject that worries the two sisters, violence against women that has gotten worse under the AKP. I'm afraid of harassment. Nowadays, I lock my door three times, and when I leave the house, I'm scared of being in a crowd without my husband. You never know what could happen. I'm afraid of being alone. Despite their efforts, Mehmet and his wife cannot reassure their daughters. There are cameras everywhere. They catch them right away. Criminals can't get away. I've seen it. They're taken to court as soon as they're caught on camera. Once it's already happened. The street cameras are very useful. We should have more. No one should be able to get away with anything. If they steal a car, the police finds them in two, three days. If they steal from someone or beat them, they're arrested. It's not enough. This system is not enough. It should be improved and corrected. It's not good enough for me. But there is one subject that everyone can agree on. Before the AKP, the veil was often assimilated with ignorance or rural values. Today, veiled women can go to university, become civil servants, or even join the army. In the past, the veil was a problem, a big issue. If you wore a veil, you couldn't get in anywhere. Thankfully, Recep Tayyip Erdogan put things right. It's undeniable. He broke the taboo. A recent poll shows that today, less than one out of ten Turks believe the veil is a topic of debate. The family's youngest daughter, Beza Noor, arrives near the end of the meal. After her studies, she wants to be a primary school teacher. The 17-year-old is the first in her family not to wear a veil. That kind of pressure doesn't exist in our family. If you want, you can cover your head or nod. After a certain age, I'm also thinking of doing it. But I have no pressure from my family. I'm free to decide. Beza Noor goes to an Imam Hatip high school. 
Once reserved for future imams, the AKP opened them to all students and has encouraged them to sign up. Like six million other young Turks who will be voting for the first time next June, the teenager has never known another person at the helm of her country. I have an idea about which party I'll be voting for, but I'd rather keep it to myself. <laughs> Use the secret. The youth vote will be a deciding factor. Erdogan has been in power longer than any other leader in modern Turkey's history. He will seek to cement his role in this election that falls on the 100th year of the founding of the Republic. Shona Bhattacharya and Ludovic de Foucault revisiting Erdogan's AKP party for France 24. Well, that's all from this week's edition. Don't forget, of course, you can catch it and all the previous editions as well on our website at france24.com. Thanks very much for watching. More news coming up very shortly.